be eliminated here from the GSL Code S. In the bottom left, we have our Zerg player. He is Samsung Galaxy Khan Solar. Really clutch victory for him there, despite the hidden base. <laughs> Such a cool game. Really was. In the upper left, we have our Protoss player. Gene Air Green Wings Avenge. Okay, so um, let's talk about the hidden base in the last game. We actually don't see that very much in StarCraft 2. And after seeing the um, probes recalled there with the Mothership Core, yeah. I really got to ask myself, why are we not seeing that more? Well, that's such a great move, I right? Mean, it's, it's, I mean, look, here's... I mean, th th there's pros and cons to a hidden base. Like, I mean, obviously the con is that if your opponent simply checks, you probably are going to lose the game. But the, nowadays, in the current meta of StarCraft 2, people don't do that. People are yeah. not checking for hidden bases. There's games, for instance, this game, they're both over here on the left side of the map. There are games, Artosis, where people do not go to the right side of the map. You can take that middle right base, there's a chance nobody goes there. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not saying you can do it every game or something, but it's it's something, especially if you're behind, something you can do to uh, make it work. Well, uh, it's definitely something that, if mixed in in the right place, can be very fruitful for you. And we saw it with Avenge. He almost won because of that. So, yeah, pretty well done. But let's take a look at this game, actually. we I, I believe we just saw a 10-gate. That was that was a very quick gateway. It might have been a uh, 11-gate. Excellent gate, from it. New Zealand. All right. He gets a GSL coin. Yeah, it looks like that guy was actually a Warcraft 3 player. That's oh, was cool. he? Yeah, I think it said uh, his clan name for Warcraft 3 West server. Oh, wow. I'm pretty sure he had that Old on the back school, there. Old school, man. He flipped it really quick, but uh, that's cool. So we got... Um, the three hatches here, but yeah, as you were saying, Artos is a 10 gate. Yeah, I think this is probably, yeah, look at that. He started Stalker, canceled and started Warp Gate, and then restarted the Stalker. So, like, he's focusing very heavily on getting this Warp Gate upgrade done. In fact, we could see just a 4 gate, which is a build that we haven't seen since, since like, just about forever tasteless. Two yeah, the very first. Uh, this is one of the oldest GS builds that there is. He's wow. going old school, and he's doing it against a double hatch before pool. Yeah, we, have, we haven't seen him? this in forever, man. Yeah. Okay, one, uh, two. Is, is it going to be a three gate or a four gate? Looks like it's going to be a three gate. That's more reasonable. You don't a three gate will kill anything a four gate will basically. So, uh, all right. I mean, the thing is, he's figuring this out pretty quickly. Well, here's the thing to note, though. I mean, this map is so big. Zerg doesn't find out about this until mm. a little bit later. Oh, my God, he's already yeah, adapted. Well, he checked, and he saw units coming out. He sees a Stalker here. There's no Nexus. He's going to go up no gas. It's a good thing he's making some spine crawlers because he's going to need them. Yeah. He even canceled that third base. Now, one of the reasons why we don't see this build that much, guys, is because uh, you can't segue into <laughs> no. uh, mid-game with this. No, it's, it's really tough, and... Uh, you know, that's a lot of Zerglings. It's This is going to be tough for him to do anything against two Spine Crawlers, Zerglings, and Queens. But the drone count is being kept very low. It's 18 right now. So, yeah. uh, you know, maybe he can put on some pressure and get something done here. You know, Stalkers kill slow Zerglings if you micro them well. and That's very uh, true. Uh, we've already seen, you know, Avengers micro definitely good enough to be able to cause some damage here. He's coming down now. Uh, doing a little bit of sniping here and there. Um, Ooh. Oh, nice. He's nice. finding some nice angles to attack on. This is one of those moments if you're Zerg and you're just in the wrong spot with some of the uh, spine crawlers. Yeah. You, you can really lose the game kick it yourself. It. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Lings are coming up now. Yeah, really utilizing the shields on these Sockers, letting those recharge. And oh my god. Is he going to go into one base DT or one base blink? I think it's going to be one base DT tasteless. Yeah, it certainly could be. Against a build like this, you can't build a Spore Crawler. You don't have the money. You just have to make Zerglings. You have to make Spine Crawlers, Queens. You're just trying to stay alive right now. Because if you do stay alive, you're going to win the game. Protoss can't do anything after this. Staying alive, though, not the easiest thing to do no, uh, at this point not. in time. A lot of Zerglings being nope, made, no though. No Dark Shrine yet. There should be in. There yep, it is. There, there it is. is. And he should have, like... He only has one gas, so he's only going to be able to afford, like, 
one or two DTs yeah. only. Thing is, that's all it's going to take. If there's no detection when those DTs pop out, that can be a win right there. He's backing up again. We almost have the speed upgrade done for the Zerglings. This is a big deal. When that speed upgrade finishes, he has to be even more careful. He has to really utilize these Zealots to block uh, the Stalkers from being surrounded. Okay, he's... You know, one thing to note is he can actually get these Stalkers over here and actually hit drones, too. Like, he can make this not even a usable base. Okay, is the Dark Shrine almost done? Okay, God. Moments like this, it feels like that thing takes forever. Uh, <laughs> so we have the Zealots just right here on the edge. Another quick little warp in there. Some more Zealots. Yeah, this is uh, this is a huge wall of zealots right now. It's really hard. For, look how he has them spread out. This is so smart because the zerglings can't run past that. So he just keeps making zerglings. We have no detection, and this dark shrine is almost done. Tasteless. Um, it's finishing up. Oh now, my I, god. Do we have anything that could detect here? In no, we have nothing space? at all. He needs to make spores. Here we go. Oh my god, that DT going in right now towards the main base. Do we have any spores making? He starts a spore caller in the main base, but is it going to be fast enough? The Lynx are coming out. Uh, actually, Lynx getting uh, not the worst surface area here on those Zealots. Looks like he's going to take out that spore. In the meantime, the Zealots doing a great job against these Zerglings. Some Zerglings running past to attack him back at home. I don't know if that's a good idea, actually. Well, he can warp in some Zealots, that's and I think he's going to be able to hold that. And I think that these DTs may actually be enough to... to Switch it right oh into his favor. Oh my god, it's getting close. <gasps> oh, and he gets the detection up. Looks like he will kill that off. Oh, a pylon block at the top of the ramp. He could go for the hatch and the spawning pool there in the main. Yeah, this is huge. In the meantime, the rest of his unit's coming back to try to defend uh, against that Zergling attack. And look at this. If he brings Zerg down to one base, then he's ahead. Um... He is actually driving the Lings out. I mean, in fact, he almost didn't even need to send back this army. Well, I think um, if he leaves the army there, there's a risk that Solar makes a bunch of units and just kills off the army. So, oh, a little bit sloppy there, letting some units up. Zergling's trying to run around and get as many kills as possible. Oh, the Stalker's actually kind of stuck outside here. That's a bit annoying. Some really nice moves with these Zerglings, though. He's going to get this hatch. <laughs> yeah. GG, Solar Taps out. Wow. 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 Damn. This series already tasteless. Absolutely amazing. Some really good Damn, play. From, dude. This is a very we old type seen of play. That, that, that is an old strategy. That is like an old, 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 well, old strategy. Well, here's the thing. I'm, I'm getting some chills right now. Think about this. Because as I was talking about before, Avenge is a player that has been playing for an extremely long time. He was one of the StarCraft II originals yeah. that switched over to StarCraft II from StarCraft One when it first came out. And he's bringing back builds yeah. that Solar hasn't seen. Solar was a StarCraft One pro gamer when that build was around. Yeah. And Solar just wasn't ready for hey, it. You gotta think, um, of course, he sees the initial uh, gateway rush and is thinking, oh, okay, I just, you know, I get my spines up, I make my lings, and I, I win in the long run. Yeah. But then, you know, those DTs come in there, and I'm wondering if Solar is thinking, what the hell? Yeah, you know, I think uh, I think he is, because that really looks like, a, you know, who thinks that you're going to get a DT off of one gas? Right. Because he only had enough gas for one DT at first. The second DT was a lot later. So, just put that in perspective. Like, really well done by Avenge. Solar almost defended it, but just didn't know. It got tricked. Avenge is showing us that he's a very tricky Protoss. You really have to stay on top of what he's doing. Well, this is anybody's game now. I'm so excited that Avenge actually brought out that crazy strategy. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, I, obviously, he cannot do that again in this series. He cannot even do that again today. No, you're, um, you're certainly the, right about that. The DTs are actually what won that for him, not the actual uh, the zealot pressure. Um, well, anyways, the map that uh, is picked here by Solar is going to be overgrown.